A Room with a View by E.M. Forster Dramatized in four parts by David Wade With Sheila Hancock as Charlotte Bartlett Stephen Moore as Mr. Beebe John Moffat as Mr. Emerson Gary Cady as George Emerson Barbara Jefford as Miss Lavish David Collings as Mr. Eager and Kathy Sarah as Lucy Honeychurch Part 2 Good Men and Violets March the 1st, 1905. Today we went into the city and... Uh, I really don't know what to write. <laughs> Quite suddenly everything has changed. Only a week ago this wasn't Florence at all. It was the Pensione Bertolini, exactly like a bit of England. Then things began to happen. The Emersons gave us their rooms with a view over the Arno. I went to Santa Croce. Miss Lavish heartlessly abandoned me and, yes, the Emersons again took me under their wing. Such a curious pair. But what has changed things more than anything is that yesterday a young man was stabbed to death in front of me and who should be there to rescue me but yet again young Mr. Emerson. It seems as if there's no avoiding him. Uh, them. I, I really don't know what to make of them. I think they're nice. But goodness me, how funny Charlotte is. As Mother says, you never know which way she'll turn. I dreaded telling her all about my great adventure. Well, not quite all of it. Yet when I did... Poor Lucy. Truly a most distressing experience. However, and all things considered, it could have been a great deal worse. Oh, do you think so? Certainly. If Mr. George Emerson had not happened to be there, from what you say, he behaved with exemplary courtesy and good sense, more perhaps than might have been expected. Had I been with you, as alas I should have been, I too would have insisted that you left the piazza instantly. I am glad that you approve of his behaviour. On this occasion, I do. Miss Lavish and I also had an adventure on our way home, didn't we, Eleanor? What's that you say? Our adventure. I was on the point of telling Lucy. Oh, my word, yes. As we were passing by the Dazio, some young customs officers had the impudence to stop us. Good gracious, whatever for? Well, that was only too obvious. They seemed to think we might have some provisions and proposed to search our reticules. I soon put a stop to that. Oh, yes, Eleanor is a match for anyone. With young men of that stamp, you simply have to make it clear that you will stand no nonsense. Ah, well, I, for one, am more than ready for Bedfordshire. What do you say, Lucy? Oh, yes, yes, I'm very tired. Good night, Eleanor. I so enjoyed our afternoon. Good night, Signor Igne. Oh, I do wish there was someone I could tell what really happened. All my adventure, not just the abridgment. But there's nobody to tell. I am all on my own. Some more coffee, Lucy. Yes, please. I shall make a little list of all the things we have to do this morning, and after that, perhaps we ought to go out. Whenever you like. Ah, Miss Bartlett, Miss Honeychurch, the very people I was looking for. Oh, good morning, Mr. Beebe. Good morning. Now then, I have a plan to put to you. This morning, I am walking up to the Torre del Gallo with both the Emersons and some American ladies. I do so hope you will join our party. Oh, Mr. Beebe, how kind. But for myself, I went there only yesterday. In the pouring rain, of course, but even so. Besides, I have so many errands to perform. For Lucy, though... Uh, she... Oh, no, if you don't mind. My dear, why ever not? You know how you hate shopping, fetching letters, changing money, all that kind of thing. No, Charlotte. Mr. Beebe, it really is most kind of you, but I will be going with my cousin. I would much rather... Oh, well, very well, dear. 
You must do as you like, of course. We shall be extremely sorry not to have your company, but never mind. I have another plan for all of us. A drive one day this week by Settignano and Fiesole. I do hope both of you will join us for that. <laughs> Enjoy your shopping. Oh, if Charlotte only knew. It isn't her I want to go with, it's who I don't want to go with. Really, I do treat her quite abominably. I shall be extremely nice to her all morning. My dear, have you seen the river? What a torrent after all our recent rain. Do let us stop and look. Of course. But please not here. This is where he... Is anything the matter? No. Why should there be? I know what it is. You would like to stop where we can see the Torre de Gallo. I feared you would repent your choice. Dearest Charlotte, I do not repent being with you in the least. How good you are to me. Let us turn off here. Where are you taking me? Ah, the Piazza della Signoria. I felt sure you ought to see it by the clear light of day. How thoughtful you are. Oh, ghosts. Ghosts. Charlotte, Miss Lucy, well met. Yeah. I have obtained a newspaper and read about last evening's catastrophe. And, you know, it has given me an idea which I believe I will work up into a book. Oh, Eleanor, I do congratulate you. What a fortunate thing. But I'm doubly fortunate. Miss Honeychurch, come you here. You must tell me absolutely everything you saw of the incident. Oh, oh but perhaps you would rather not. If you could manage without it, I think I would rather not. I'm sorry. It is I who am sorry. We literary hacks are shameless creatures. I believe there's no secret of the human heart into which we would not pry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in the piazza since eight o'clock collecting material. It seems the two men quarreled over a five-year note. But I shall make the subject of the quarrel a young lady. Oh, a heroine. And what will you call her? Leonora. Leonora. Oh, <laughs> Eleanor, of course. Her participation will not only raise the tone, but furnish an excellent plot. And what is the plot to be exactly? Ah, what indeed? Love, of course. Of course. Love, love of Leonora, which is the reason for the murder. <laughs> murder followed, as I see it, by abduction leading to implacable revenge. Oh, how thrilling. Oh, that is the barest outline. There will be a deal of local colour, and I shall introduce some humorous characters. <laughs> and let me give you all fair warning. I intend to be unmerciful to the British tourist. Oh, you wicked woman. I'm sure you're thinking of the Emerson. I confess that in Italy my sympathies are not with my own countrymen. It is the neglected Italians who attract me. For I insist that a tragedy such as yesterday's is no less tragic because it happened to those in humble circumstances. <sighs> and now, if you will forgive me... Why, Eleanor, of course. We wish you all success with your labours. Oh, yes, indeed. Goodbye, Miss Lavish. Arrivederci, signorine. That is my idea of a really clever woman. Hers will be a novel full of pathos. I am sure it will be. Just so long as I am not in it. She is emancipated, but only in the very best sense of the word. We had a long talk yesterday. She believes in justice and truth and human interest. She also told me that she had a high opinion of the destiny of women. Miss Bartlett! Miss Honeychurch! Oh. Good morning to you. Mr. Eager, what a pleasant surprise. Oh, not for me, alas. I have been watching you for quite some time. We were talking to Miss Lavish. Uh, so I saw. Fotografie, signore. Panorami. Photographs, panorami. Go away. And that day, yes. Sono occupato. But I am about to venture a suggestion. Would you and Miss Honeychurch be disposed to join me in a drive someday this week? A drive in the hills? We might go up by Fiesole and back by Settignano. Oh! Mr. Eager, what a wonderful suggestion. Oh, but you've only heard the half of it. There is a point on that road where we might get down and have a ramble. And where the view of Florence is most beautiful. It is the one that Alessio Baldovinetti is fond of introducing to his pictures. 
That man had a decided feeling for landscape. Decided? But who looks at it today? However, we shall do so. Well, I'm sure that we accept your invitation with the greatest pleasure, don't we, Lucy? Well, yes, but Mr. Beaver's... We Beep shall be a party, right? carré! And in these days of tumult, one has great needs of the country and its message of purity. Photograph, signore, panorama. Ecco, signore. Andate, andate via! Presto, presto! You see, the town, beautiful as it is, remains the town. How very true. Indeed, this very square, so I am told, witnessed yesterday the most sordid of tragedies. To one who loves the Florence of Dante and Savonarola, there is something portentous in such a desecration. Portentous and humiliating. Humiliating indeed. Miss Honeychurch hmm? happened to be passing through oh. as it occurred. She can hardly bear to speak of it. And how, young lady, did you come to be here? Please, Mr. Eager, do not blame her. The fault was mine. I left her unchaperoned. So you were here alone, Miss Honeychurch? Uh, practically. One of our acquaintances at the pension kindly brought her home. Oh, for her, too, it must have been a terrible experience. I trust, Miss Honeychurch, that neither of you were at all, um, that is to say, it was not in your immediate proximity. He died by the fountain, I believe. And you and your friend... Were over at the lodger. Well, that must have saved you so much. <laughs> but forgive me, I'm keeping you in conversation when I'm sure you must have more important things to do. Oh, no, Mr. Eager, only errands and a little shopping. Shopping? Oh, then I am your man. Oh. As a resident of Florence, I can guide you, if you will allow me to places where you will be asked to pay no more than a fair price. Oh. <sighs> Charlotte's right. I do hate shopping. Presents, mementos, most of them quite hideous. Hey, Miss Honeychurch, let me commend to you these brooches. The excellent value. Mere mosaic, of course, but with the appearance of stones. Which the maids next Christmas will never tell from the real thing. Lucy, for your dear mother, I thought I might purchase this charming little picture frame. Fashioned as far as anyone can see from gilded pastry. Heraldic saucers? Very typical. Or perhaps you prefer the classical. Uh, the Eros and Psyche in alabaster? Speaking for myself, I feel... And all of it would cost much less in London. Oh, shall we never leave this horrid shop? What a disagreeable morning. Miss Lavish frightens me. Mr. Eager, too. I don't know why. When people frighten you, you stop respecting them. I don't believe Miss Lavish is a great artist. I doubt if Mr. Eager is as full of spirituality and culture as he would like us to suppose. As for Charlotte, Charlotte is the same as ever. One can be nice to her, but it is impossible to love her. Oh, what's Mr. Eager talking about now? He is the son of a labourer. Oh, yes, I happen to know it for a fact. He was a mechanic of some sort himself when young. Then he, he took to writing for the socialistic press. This can only be the Emersons. How wonderfully people rise these days. Generally, one has only sympathy with their success. A desire for education and for social advance. In, in these, there is something not wholly vile. Indeed, there are some working men whom one would be very willing to see out here in Florence. Little as they would make of it. Is Mr. Emerson a journalist now? He is not. He made an advantageous marriage. Oh, so he has a wife? Dead. Miss Bartlett, dead. I wonder he has the effrontery to look me in the face, to dare to claim acquaintance with me. He was in my London parish long ago. The other day in Santa Croce, when he was with Miss Honeychurch, I snubbed him. Yes, and let him beware that he does not get more than a snub. What? Oh, yes. Exposure. No, I have said enough. Are you saying that he is an irreligious man? We know that already. Lucy, dear. I should be astonished if you knew all. The boy, an innocent child at the time, I will exclude. God knows what his education and his inherited qualities may have made him. But perhaps it's something that we'd better not hear. I agree. I will say no more. You have said very little. It was my intention to say very little. Huh. Well then, if you want to know, murder. That man murdered his wife. <gasps> How? Well, to all intents and purposes, he murdered her. Um, 
That day in Santa Croce, did they say anything against me? Not a word, Mr. Eager. I thought perhaps they had been libeling me to you. But I suppose it is only their personal charms that make you defend them. I'm not defending them. They're nothing to me. How could you think Lucy was defending them? She will find it difficult to do so, for that man has murdered his wife in the sight of God. Perhaps, after all, I will buy this leading tower of Pisa. Yes. And uh, I must be going. Thank you for your great kindness, Mr. Eager. And we look forward with immense pleasure to our drive. Oh, is that taking place? Lucy, where are your manners? My dear young lady, if my suggestion does not take your fancy far, be it from me... No, 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 Mr. Eager, on the contrary, we were both as keen on the idea as possible, but Lucy was not absolutely sure that it was definite, were you, dear? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Eager. <laughs> well, do not concern yourself, Miss Hannichurch. I cannot have made myself perfectly clear... <laughs> And now I must indeed be on my way. Uh, good morning to you both. See, my dear, an invitation from a man like Mr. Eager is something to be sought. Remember, he is the English chaplain here in Florence, a resident. His knowledge of the city is exceptional. He is acquainted with all the best people. A drive with him is an occasion. Bother the drive. You see. But, Charlotte, don't you see? It is exactly the same drive as Mr. Beebe suggested this morning. Why should Mr. Eager invite us in that absurd manner? We might as well invite him. We are each paying for ourselves. Ooh. If that is so, dear, I mean, if the drive we're going on with Mr. Eager is the same as the one suggested by Mr. Beebe, then I foresee a sad kettle of fish. How? Because Mr. Beebe is sure to ask Eleanor Lavish to come. That will mean another carriage. Far worse. Mr. Eager does not like Eleanor, and she knows it. The truth is, she's too unconventional for him. Yes. Oh, what sort of a place is this, Florence? Where the world I know breaks up and turns into a magic city where people think and do the most extraordinary things. Murder. Accusations of murder. Is this what always happens in these streets? Oh, you are such a beautiful city. But is there more in you than meets the eye? The power, perhaps to stir up passions, good and bad, and to fulfil them. Mind you, as far as the arrangement is concerned, we may never know whether it is Mr. Beebe who forgot to tell Mr. Eager, or Mr. Eager who forgot... Oh, how happy us, Charlotte is to be troubled to over things that do not matter, and to appear oblivious to things that do. really you they want, my dear. I, of course, am only asked for appearance sake. You shall go with the two gentlemen, and I and Eleanor will follow behind. A one-horse carriage will do for us. Oh, yes, how difficult it is. What do you think about it? I don't know what I think, nor what I want. Oh, dear, I do hope Florence isn't boring you, Lucy. Speak the word, and as you know, I would take you to the ends of the earth. Thank you, Charlotte. But here instead is the post office. Well, now, these two letters are for you. One from Freddy. It will be the usual scrawl. All athletics and biology. Biology? You forget. My brother is a medical student. Oh, so he is. How foolish of me. And this one's from my mother. I shall read it as we go along. has sprung some quite unusual surprises. Crocuses, which, if you recall, we bought in the belief that they were yellow, have come up puce, a colour not at all pleasing in crocuses. Then the new parlourmaid has watered all the ferns with essence of lemonade. Few, if any, are expected to recover. Dear Sir Harry Otway called upon us yesterday. His heart is broken at the new semi-detached cottages, which he says will be the ruin of Summer Street. Oh, dear mother, dear Windy Corner, where I am allowed to do everything and nothing ever happens to me. And what news from your mother, Lucy, dear? Oh, nothing much, except that Mrs. Vise and her son Cecil have gone to Rome. She gives us the address of their hotel. Indeed. 
Oh, oh, not that way, if you don't mind. Let us walk back through the Piazza della Signoria. One can never have too much of that. I suppose not. Uh, do you know the Vises? Oh, I don't believe I do. They're really nice people. So clever. At least my idea of what's really clever. Oh, don't you long to be in Rome? I die for it. Charlotte, listen. What if we popped off to Rome tomorrow, straight to the Vises Hotel? I'm sick of Florence. You said you'd go to the ends of the earth for me, so do. Oh, do. Oh, you drool person. If we were to rush off to Rome, what prey would become of your drive in the hills? <laughs> The difficulty is that Mr. Beebe has also asked the Emersons. And so he should, since Eager would doubtless have omitted them. His sort has no idea of proletarian worth. Regrettably, Mr. Beebe did not consult with Mr. Eager first. He knew how his suggestion would be met, that's why. Perhaps, but it was thoughtless of him. Not only have we been obliged to hire two four-seaters, but must be careful as to who should ride with whom. Where is the difficulty? I am all for liberty. Let people sit exactly where it pleases No, them. no. For one thing, we must at all costs see to it that Mr. Eager does not ride with old Mr. Emerson. Why should we do that? My dear, believe me, it is necessary. Then what do you suggest? Well, you will not wish to be with Mr. Eager either, I imagine. I am indifferent to him and his opinion of me. Well, what I propose is this. Mr. Eager rides with me and Lucy, you with Mr. Beebe and both the Emersons. Must it be both? I thought that you approved of the Emersons. I do, exceedingly. I only feel their honest virtues should be shared equally among us. Let the old man ride with you. But that would place him once again with Mr. Eager. Well, take the young Emerson, then. Even worse, Lucy simply cannot endure him. Oh, how difficult all this is. Ah, oh, well, it seems I must resign myself to the undivided riches of both father and son. Miss Bartlett, Miss Lavish, if you are ready, our carriages are at the door. Ah, are we all assembled? Excellent. Then how are we to sit? May I suggest... Uh, Mr. Eager, if you'll allow me... Excuse me, Miss Bartlett. Miss Bartlett. Signore, mi dispiace, ma... Eager, yes, our young Phaeton wishes to address you. What? Our charioteer, our driver. Phaeton to the life. Don't you agree? I don't see Phoebus letting him drive anything. Well, my man, what do you want? And who is this young woman? A mia sorella. He is my sister, signore. What's she doing here? Uh, please, she liked very much if, uh, if, uh, se poteva venire con me. Come with you? Si. No, it's out of the question. Ma signore, sta sempre a casa, non esce no, mai. No, I tell you, this is nothing but oh, an imposition. Oh, Mr. Eager, you're very hard. Oh, on the contrary, Miss Lavish, I know these people. First a ride, and then uh, something else. This will prove the thin end of the wedge. Then let it be so. Must we be so unadventurous, Charlotte? At least you will back me up. Well, well I, I must say, Mr. Eager, I don't really see the harm. Oh, come on, Eager. Look at the poor girl, all pale and pensive. Doesn't she remind you of Persephone? Come out to meet the spring. <laughs> the least we can do is let our Phaeton drive her into it. Oh, if you insist. Young man, si, listen to me. Your sister may accompany you on the box, but only as the greatest favour. Do you understand? Si, signore. Ho capito perfettamente. Grazie, yes, grazie. Yes, yes. Now, no, no, where were we before that little diversion? You, you were just about to arrange the seating, Mr. Eager, but if you will perhaps Does allow me... Does it matter how we sit, so long as we sit somewhere? Uh, oh, Mr. Beebe, indeed it does. Miss Lavish and I have made a plan. Don't and, uh, anybody worry about me. Just put me anywhere. After such a heavy lunch, I shall fall asleep for sure and very likely snore. Well, I shall give a lead and get in here. Yes. Oh, well, then, Mr. Emerson, if yes. you and your son will kindly join Miss Lavish in the leading carriage... No, 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 you can't put us together. We're always together. George, you get into the one behind. Oh, but no, no, no Mr. Mr. Eager, would you perhaps... Miss Bartlett, get... why don't you and Miss Honeychurch join me and young Mr. Emerson? Uh, thank you, Mr. B. But Lucy, dear, I think you might prefer to go with... Uh, the... That's right, Miss Honeychurch. Why don't you come and talk to me? Uh, I think we're friends again, don't you? And the leading vehicle, in any case, is my responsibility. Oh, no, but Mr. Eager! Oh, this is a catastrophe. Eleanor has landed up with Mr. Eager, he has landed up with her and old Mr. Emerson, and I with that impossible young man. The afternoon is ruined!
This expedition is the work of fate. But for it, I would have avoided George Emerson forever, which is all the more necessary because he plainly did not wish to avoid me. It's not that I dislike him. It's that I can't make out what happened the other day, and I think he can. It's frightening. Anyone can be upset at the sight of death, but to talk about it afterwards, to go from talk to silence to... to... sympathy. Something has gone wrong, wrong in every way. We are to blame. We are... wicked. That's why I must avoid him. But somehow fate, fate in the shape of Charlotte and two English clergymen, would not suffer me to leave Florence till I had made this expedition. So, Miss Hannichurch, are you travelling as a student of art? Of art? Oh, dear me, no. Oh, no. Perhaps as a student of human nature, then, like myself. Oh, no, I am here merely as a tourist. Indeed. <laughs> if you'll not think me rude, we residents sometimes pity you poor tourists. Handed about like a parcel of goods from Venice to Florence, from Florence to Rome. Oh, do Living look! Phaeton has just looped the reins around his sister's waist and his arm with them. Mercifully, Mr. Eager has his back to them and Mr. Emerson's asleep. Not that it would worry him, I'm sure. in one inextricable world. You know the American girl in Punch who says, Say, Popper. What did you see at Rome? And the father replies, Why, I guess Rome was the place where we saw the yellow dog. <laughs> and that's tourism for you. <laughs> oh, I quite agree. The narrowness and superficiality of the Anglo-Saxon tourist is nothing less than a menace. Quite so, Miss Lavish. Now, the English colony of Florence, Miss Honeychurch, and it is of considerable size... No, course, he's trying to kiss Persephone. Oh, lucky girl. They and Mr. Emerson must be the only ones enjoying this expedition. Lady Helen Laverstock, for instance, is at present busy over Fra Angelico. I mention her name because we are passing her villa on the left. Uh, no, you can only see it if you stand. No, 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 no. Do not stand or you will fall. This man is driving far too fast. Slower. Piano, slower. Piano, piano. Si, si, va bene, signore, va bene, benissimo. Eh? Yeah. You see, some critics go so far as to believe that Lady Helen's garden is the scene of the Decameron, which lends interest, does it not? It does indeed. Where, I wonder, do they place the scene of that wonderful seventh day? Slower! Piano, do you hear? If you will look now to your right, Miss Honeychurch, you will see the house of Mr. Van der Plank, an American of the very best type. So rare, one must be grateful. Ah! <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Eager, since, as you promised us, we're shortly to view Florence from the perspective of Alessio Baldovinetti, mm -hmm. do you look upon him as a cause of the Renaissance or as one of its manifestations? I... Oh! That's slower! Piano! Piano! How many more times do I have to... Stop! Stop the carriage instantly! What's happening? Well, what's what's going on? I don't know, Mr. Emerson. Young man, Signore. tell me the truth. Who is that person beside you? Why have we stopped? Is anything the matter? That, Beeb, is what I'm endeavouring to ascertain, I repeat. Who is this person? A mia sorella, my sister, lo già detto. Well, she may be many things, but she is most certainly not. Your sister. Ah, you are a liar. Bugiardo. No, no, signore, davvero. You have lied to me quite shamelessly. No tip for you. Nessuna mancia. Signorina, get down this instant off the box Mr. and... Mr. Eager, this is all quite unnecessary. These young folk are lovers, and on no account should they be separated. Carry on, my dears. Oh. Pray, carry on. Mr. Emerson, well, I really cannot... too would let them be, though I dare say I shall receive scant support. But all my life I've flown in the face of the conventions. No, we must not submit. I knew he was trying it on. He is treating us as if... We were a party of cooks, tourists. Oh, surely not. Beeb, I appeal to you. Surely you will back me up. If you ask me, after the warning they have had, they will now behave themselves and we can proceed. Behave themselves? What have they done that is wrong? Leave them alone, Mr. Eager. Do we find happiness so often that we should turn it off the box when it happens to sit there? To be driven by lovers... Oh, a king might envy us. Mr. Eager! 
Oscar, is it not possible to proceed? I dare say it is, Miss Bartlett, but I am not to be swayed. Young man, this woman is not your sister. See, oh. You have lied shamelessly. You have behaved shamelessly. Hand her down with no more ado. Oh, signorina. Why does he turn to me? What can I do? And where does she... Oh, the way she looks. Hand her down, I say. Say, signore. And the arm. Oh, ah, victory at last. It is not a victory, Mr. Eager. It is defeat. You have parted two people who were happy. You agree with me, I know, Miss Honeychurch. Speak up for me. And uh, George, you too, speak up. Defend me. We have tried to buy what cannot be bought. His bargain was to drive us, and he is doing so. We have no rights over his soul. He was not driving us well. He jolted us. Now, that I deny. It was as restful as sleeping. No! <laughs> ah, ah, but he's jolting us now right enough. <laughs> Can you wonder? He'd like to throw us out, and most certainly he is justified. And if I was superstitious, I'd be frightened of the girl, too. It doesn't do to injure young people. Have you not heard of Lorenzo de' Medici? Oh, most certainly I have. Do you refer to Lorenzo il Magnifico, or to Lorenzo Duke of Urbino, or to Lorenzo surnamed Lorenzino, on account of his diminutive stature? The Lord knows. Well, possibly he does know, for I refer to Lorenzo the Poet. He wrote a line, or so I heard yesterday, which runs something like this. Don't go fighting against the spring. War not with May would render a more correct meaning. Yes, well, the point is, Mr. Eager, we have warred with it. Look down there, into the valley. Fifty miles of spring, which we've come up to admire. Mm. Do you suppose there's any difference between spring in nature and spring in man? But there we go, praising the one and condemning the other, ashamed that the same laws work eternally through both. I think, I hope, that we are at a point where we can get down and commence our ramble. You imagine, Mr. Ega, mm. that Alessio Baldovinetti stood to paint his pictures. Ah, Miss Lavish. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, mm. that is the great question before us. Mm. Uh, yeah. And one I hope we may resolve before the day is out. Mm. For certain, it, it was hereabouts. My sense is that it must have been a little to our left. Would you think so? Well, I have a clear impression, and I was studying a reproduction of the work in question only yesterday, that it would have been a good deal more in the opposite direction. Well, I really doubt his work will bear out that interpretation. If you consider the relative positions of the various city landmarks... Well, what's your opinion, George? Oh, since there is a thick haze over the entire city, I don't see how anything can be made out at all. No more do I. Well, Mr. Eager, I shall put it to the test. Charlotte... Come and give me your advice. Oh, with pleasure, though I know nothing of these matters. Lucy, why not stay with Mr. Eager and Mr. Beeb and hear what they decide? Oh, no, thank you. I'd much rather come with you, Charlotte. Uh, Beeb, let you and me go over there a little. I suspect that we shall find the spot we're looking for, if you wish. Yeah, I'm sure they'll find nothing of the sort. No question about it. Then you and I had better go and practice our Italian on the drivers, George. See if we can make amends. <laughs> Have you a cigar to offer them? Well, this is where I thought he must have stood. But now I see the view, I'm no longer sure. What do you say, Miss Lucy? I'm sure I don't know either. Ah, well. Tell me, Charlotte, how were things in your carriage? Better, I hope, than they turned out with us. No, hardly. For the sake of conversation, I inquired of young Mr Emerson what his profession was. Can you imagine what he answered? I'm no good at guessing. Tell me. The railway. Railway? That's what he said. And I was very sorry I had asked and did not know what to say. But dear Mr. Beebe came to my rescue and turned the conversation so cleverly. The railway? <laughs> oh, but I shall die. Of course it is the railway. He's the image of a porter. <laughs> on, on the southeastern... Eleanor, <laughs> hush, they'll hear. I can't stop. A porter. 
What? Eleanor! The Emersons can't hear, and I'm sure they wouldn't mind if they did. Miss Honeychurch, you were listening. You naughty girl, go away. Oh, Lucy, you really ought to be with Mr. Eager. I'll never find them now. And anyway, as I said, I don't want Mr. to... Mr. Eager will be offended. It is your party. Please, I'd much rather stop here with you. Now, I agree with Charlotte. It's like a school feast. The boys have got separated from the girls. Miss Lucy, you are to go. We wish to converse on topics unsuited for your ear. Then please do so. I shall not listen. Oh, I do wish Freddy and your mother could be here. How tired one gets. Tired? Then, Charlotte, observe my foresight. What have you there? My dear, Macintosh squares for us to sit on. Foresight, indeed. Warranted to protect the human frame from damp grass or cold marble steps. Ah... Uh... But you have only the two. I fear so. Lucy, you shall have the other one. No, Charlotte, I'm not tired. I'm perfectly content to stand. Out of the question. The ground will do for me. Really, I have not had rheumatism for years. If I do feel it coming on, I shall stand. Charlotte, please. Imagine your mother's feelings if I let you sit on the wet grass in your white linen. No, this spot will suit me admirably. Charlotte, the ground is soaking. No. Not that you would notice. Uh, here we are now, all delightfully settled. Even if my dress is thinner, it will not show so much being brown. Oh. Sit down, dear, please. You're too unselfish. You don't assert yourself enough. I shall go and find Mr. Beebe and Mr. Eager. Mr. Beebe and Mr. Eager. Nobody to ask except. Signore? Signorina. Mm. Che vuole? You uh, want? Um, where. where clergyman? Dove cla. clergy? Uh, uh, yes, see, clergyman. What's clergy? You know, good men. Buono uomini? Buoni uomini, good uh, men. <laughs> good men give me cigars, see? <laughs> very good. Uh, very kind, I'm sure, but uh, where? Ah, venga con me. Come, oh. come, I sure come, oh. come. Oh, goodness me, where is he going? Can Mr. Beeb and Mr. Eager be in such a thicket? Oh, I do hope I haven't made a terrible mistake. Uh, signore? Va bene, va bene. Ah, aspetti. Momento. Uh, now what? Why are you stopping? Oh, violets. Great blue violets. See, si. viole. Ecco. Uh, for me? Per la signorina. Per lei, signorina. Oh, how lovely. Bella, bella, grazie. <laughs> uh, but, uh, ma buono mini? Subito, subito. Come, uh. asho. <laughs> That. Niente, it's nothing. I think we passed them. Passed them? Oh, no, capisco, passed them. Uh, too far. Good men back there, that way. No, 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 Good men here. Venga qua. Here. Eccolo. Where? What? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, help me. Please, I, I didn't see the bank. Please, help me up. No, signorina. Va bene così. It's all right, so. Coraggio! Coraggio! E amore! Whatever does he mean? Oh, well, what does it matter, since I seem to have fallen into a pool of violets? They're beautiful, like blue water nourishing the earth. Blue earth, gold sky, blue Everywhere and gold. Miss Honeychurch. <gasps> Mr. Emerson. Lucy. <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Emerson. Lucy. <gasps> Lucy. Ah, 
There you are, Miss Bartlett. Just in time. We're about to start for home. Is anything the matter? No, Mr. Eager, no. My cousin lost her way a little, that is all. Oh, Miss Honeychurch, I fear the fault is mine. Uh, Miss Lavish said that you were looking for me. I'm oh, so sorry. Say to... no more about it, Mr. Eager. It, it is not your fault, and we have had a very pleasant afternoon in spite of everything. We do thank you for arranging it. George! George! Uh, has anybody seen my boy? A few minutes ago, Mr. Emerson, he was admiring the view. Go through there. You may find him. Well, you mean through the bushes? Yes. Well, how can anybody get through there? What can you be thinking of? George! George! Beeb, <laughs> if you can find Miss Lavish and collect both Emersons, we can make a start. By all means, but tell me, what's been going on? Well, has anything? I've not the least idea. You vanished on the hillside, and when I tried to find the others to share my tea basket, they'd all vanished too. Yes, well... There you are. Uh, we should collect everyone just as soon as possible. The, the driver says there's going to be a thunderstorm. I have a feeling there's already been one. Ah, thank goodness. There's the lavish woman now. Charlotte, at last. My dear good creature, what became of you? And Lucy, you look as if you'd seen a ghost. I I'm sorry? Uh, Lucy is a little tired, that's all. Oh, uh, uh, Eleanor, I have a terrible confession to make. Charlotte, my dear, whatever can it be? I have lost one of your precious Macintosh squares. Oh, dear. I can't find it anywhere. Well, of course, you must have dropped it. Have you no idea where? Well, it may have been... Well, well, no, no, not really. No idea at all. And I've looked everywhere. I'll replace it naturally, here if possible, or else as soon as we get home. Let us talk about it later. Yes. After all, what's the loss of one Macintosh square? Uh, Signor, oh. Cetuano, andiamo, subito, andiamo. My friends, if you will take your seats, we must be on our way. Lucy, dear, this time I'll ride with you, if you don't mind. Oh, please do. I should like that more than anything. Thing. Charlotte, are you sure that girl's all right? Oh, nothing that a little rest won't quickly cure. Andiamo, dobbiamo andare. <laughs> Our dashing phaeton certainly is not all right. He cannot still be sulking, can he? Well, if he is, it's no concern of mine. Ah, Lindesina, cosa vuole? Eh? Non sa lei, non sa proprio niente lei. Io lo so, io le mostrerò ciò che vuole, ciò che desidera. Coraggio! Amore! Oh, ah. Andiamo! Signora, is, is everyone aboard? I still can't find oh. my boy. The signorina will walk. Oh. What, all the way? So, he know I warn him. But I'm quite sure he'll manage, Mr. Emerson. Such youth, such vigor. Well, I hope so. What can he be thinking of? If everyone is ready at last, do let us go. Andiamo! Eh? Andiamo! I not think to bring an umbrella. This parasol is quite inadequate. Lucy, dear, come closer. If I might say so, well, there is something almost blasphemous in this horror of the elements. Are we seriously to suppose that all this immense electrical display is simply called into existence to extinguish you and me? No, of course. Even from the scientific standpoint, the chances against our being struck by lightning are enormous. The steel knives, the only articles which might attract the current, are in the other carriage. <laughs> and in any case, we are infinitely safer than if we were walking. So, courage, courage and faith. Yes, Mr. Eager is quite right, my dear. Courage and faith. Oh, Charlotte, you are so good to me. Mr. Eager! Yes, Mr. B. Will you very kindly stop for a moment? What? Uh, stop, driver! Do you hear? Oh, what? Oh. Look, I'm so sorry, but Mr. Emerson is still worrying about his son, and I seem unable... Eager, ask your driver, please, which way George went. The boy may lose his way. He may be killed. Mr. Eager, do not ask our driver anything concerning young Mr. Emerson. He, he, he is of no help. Then what do you suggest? Uh, go and support Mr. Beeb. The old man is driving him demented. Here we are. He may be killed. Do ask your driver, please. Oh, typical behavior. 
In the presence of reality, that kind of person invariably breaks down. Now, look here, Mr. Emerson. Try and be a little calm. Charlotte, how much does Mr. Eager know? Nothing, dearest. But he, of course, our driver, knows everything. Dearest, had we better... Uh, shall I... Oh, it is so dreadful to be entangled with low-class people, even if their words count for nothing, even if one is never to see them again. All the same, he saw it all. Uh, Signor? Signorina. Uh, Silencio. Huh. Va bene. There now. Yes. Oh, Phaeton, does your silence come so cheap? I thought better of you than that. Oh, oh, oh. good heavens, what was that? Uh, Mr. Eager, have we been struck by lightning? No, no, no. It, it was close, but we are spared. See, Charlotte, you be the pluvious lady against us, but the thunder is on our side. Oh, yes. We have been saved as by a miracle. I call this a real adventure. <laughs> An adventure frees the spirit. It opens up the soul to endless possibilities for good. When it is over, one is as if reborn. Do you not agree, Mr. Eager? <laughs> well, perhaps I should say a short prayer. <laughs> oh, merciful God, we thank thee that thou hast deigned to spare us in this our time of peril. Amen. 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 Drive on, please. And the ammo. Hey, and the ammo. Dearest, put this wrap around you. Charlotte. Oh, dear Charlotte, kiss me. Only you can understand me. You warned me to be careful, and I... I thought I was... Developing. Do not cry, dearest. I have been obstinate and silly. Worse than you know. Far worse. Once by the river. Oh, but he isn't killed. He wouldn't be killed, would he? No, I trust not. One would always pray against that. He is really... I think he was taken by surprise. Just as I was before. But this time, I'm not to blame. I do want you to believe that. No, I really want to be truthful. I am a little to blame. I had silly thoughts. The sky was gold and the ground all blue with violets. And for a moment, he looked like someone in a book. In a book? Heroes, gods. And then? Oh, Charlotte, you know what happened then. <sighs> It is so hard to be absolutely truthful. Don't be troubled, dearest. Wait till you are calmer. We'll talk about it before bedtime in my room. Yes. Oh, yes. And then at last I shall understand myself. I shan't again be troubled by things that come out of nothing and mean... I, I know not what... Now I shall give a good brush to your hair. Thank you. Charlotte... Yes, dear? When Miss Allen asked me after dinner if I would play and I refused, I wasn't too ungracious, was I? Far from it. Music suddenly seemed a childish occupation. Did it, dearest? Yes, I dare say. So, what is to be done? Done? Yes, dear. A point which you alone can settle. It has been raining for nearly four hours. How do you propose to silence him? The driver. No, my dear, Mr. George Emerson. I don't understand. How are you going to stop him talking about what occurred? 
I have a feeling that talk is a thing he will never do. I, too, intend to judge him charitably, but unfortunately I have met the type before. They seldom keep their exploits to themselves. Exploits? My dear child, do you suppose that this was his first? Oh, I am no prude. There is no need to call him a wicked young man, but he is obviously thoroughly unrefined. Put it down to his deplorable antecedents and education, if you wish. But we are no further on with our question. What do you propose to do? I... I propose to speak to him. Oh? No. Charlotte, I shall never forget your kindness. But as you said, it is my affair, mine and his. I see. And are you going to implore him, to beg him to keep silent? Oh, certainly not. There will be no difficulty. Whatever you ask him, he answers yes or no, then it is over. I fear for you, my dear. You are so young and inexperienced. You cannot realise how men can be, how they can take a brutal pleasure in insulting a woman. This afternoon, for instance, if I had not arrived, what would have happened? I, I can't think. When he insulted you, how would you have replied? I hadn't time to think. You came. Yes, but if I hadn't, what would you have done? I should have... Oh, oh. oh for a real man to turn to. Mr. Beebe is hopeless. That is Mr. Eager, but you do not trust him. Oh, for your brother. He is young, but I know that his sister's insult would rouse in him a very lion. Thank God, chivalry is not dead. There are still left some men who can reverence women. It will be a push to catch the morning train, but we must try. What train? The train to Rome. Your mother told us in her letter at what hotel the Vises stay. We shall join them there and be much more comfortable. Dearest Lucy, how will you ever forgive me? Charlotte, dear, what do you mean? I have nothing to forgive you for. You have a great deal. And I have a very great deal to forgive myself, too. I know well how much I vex you at every turn. But no! But yes, you want someone younger and stronger and more in sympathy with you. You mustn't say these things. I have been a failure. Failed to make you happy, failed in my duty to your mother. She has been so generous to me. I shall never be able to face her again after this disaster. But she will understand. It's not your fault, this... trouble. And it isn't a disaster, either. It is my fault, and it is a disaster. What right had I to make friends with Miss Lavish when I was here for your sake? If I have vexed you, it is equally true that I have neglected you. Your mother will see that as clearly as I do when you tell her. Why need mother hear of anything? But you tell her everything. I suppose I do generally. Unless you feel it is something that you would prefer not to tell her. <sighs> Naturally, I should have told her. But in case she should blame you in any way, I promise I will not. Uh -huh. I will never speak of it either to her or to anyone. You are too good to me. Oh, well, high time for Bedfordshire. Get all the rest you can, my dear. We have an early train. Oh, room with a view. What have you brought me to? One thing is for sure. I have been taken advantage of, and not, I think, by Mr. Emerson alone. Him I cannot judge, but Charlotte. She has worked on my sincerity and on the sympathy and love I needed. I shall not easily forget it. For in the end, what does she hold out to me? A cheerless, loveless world in which the young rush to destruction until they learn better. A shame-faced world of precautions and barriers, which may avert evil, but do not seem to bring good. <gasps> that must be... Yes, it's him. 
Oh. Mr. Emerson. Oh, Charlotte. Oh, no, it's my affair. Mr. Emerson, before you retire, I wish one word with you downstairs in the drawing room, if you please. Uh, of course, Miss Brother. No, it isn't true. It can't all be true. I want not to be muddled. I want to grow old quickly. Mm-hmm. 